The renewed investigation into a serial killer in central Indiana and the search to identify people's remains goes back to a case that has really captured attention for decades. Investigators believe that Herb Baumeister targeted gay men, killing at least 25 people in the 1990s. It was in 1996 that police found 10,000 bone fragments in the woods that surrounded his property, the Fox Hollow Farm in Westfield. Baumeister escaped to Canada, and then he took his own life before authorities could catch up with him. Investigators now are continuing their search on that farm to see if there are any more victims remains there. In this special now, we break down this case from our original reporting back in 1996 to the recent developments. But first, our Jenny Runovich sits down with the private investigator who cracked that case open. The decades old story found on these shelves about a serial killer in central Indiana. Soon after police began digging up bones on the Baumeister family estate, was Baumeister sparked from the start by Virgil Vandegrift. Because for you, it went from a simple missing persons case right. to a serial killer. Correct. The retired Marion County Sheriff's detective worked a lot of high profile crimes. The Speedway bombings. But as a private investigator in the 90s, Vandegriff began the Baumeister case. He got calls from two separate families of missing men, both gay, similar physically, who disappeared from local bars. And I knew it was important to get the missing flyers out, number one, and to establish communications with people in the gay community. And it didn't take long to find out that there were a lot of missing people. Close to a dozen missing gay men. But the PI hit roadblocks with police reluctant to investigate. So Vandegrift developed a profile of the killer. A white male in his uh, late 30s, early 40s, um, married with family. And soon an informant confirmed everything. Herb Baumeister's sole survivor, who described being taken to a mansion with a pool, getting strangled with a hose. When he faked passing out, I think Baumeister thought he was dead, and of course then he opened up his eyes and he wasn't dead. So that informant was key to cracking this case. Oh, absolutely. The informant didn't know his real name yet, but when he saw Baumeister at a bar again, he got bold got up on one of the tables at the bar and yelled out, this guy's a serial killer, somebody get his license plate number. Of course, that uh, traced back to her Baumeister. Vandegrift also got aerial pictures of possible properties where the informant was taken, and eventually his search to find a killer unearthed the monster at Fox Hollow Farm, along with thousands of bone fragments, including the victims he was hired to find. The crime tape came down today. After finding skeletal remains, five people here. Investigators say the search is over. It was early last fall when Herbert Baumeister's kids found a human skull on the property. Baumeister is said to have taken it away and explained that it was somehow related to his father's work as a physician. The skull has not been seen since. About the same time, an informant told Indianapolis police that Herb Baumeister was the last one seen with a missing person they were looking for. But Baumeister refused to talk to the cops. By then, his personal and professional life was crumbling. His wife filed for divorce. He was falling deeper and deeper in debt, trying to maintain this Hamilton County estate, along with this place, a home he'd moved out of some three years ago in Castleton. It seems Baumeister had less than a cordial relationship with some of his neighbors here. They say he flatly refused to sell his house or even repair his house, all the time insisting that he lived here, even though the home is obviously vacant. Neighbors are curious about why Baumeister kept the house and what he has inside. And while warring with some of his neighbors, Baumeister's business was falling apart. Employees say Baumeister owes thousands of dollars in back pay and for bounce checks and other debts. They didn't get their money and the electricity didn't get paid and all that stuff, so they shut the power off. He and his wife operated two Save-A-Lot thrift stores in Indianapolis. They had a contract with the Children's Bureau and had agreed that a percentage of the proceeds, about $4,000 a month, would go to the Bureau. But then the money stopped. 
and all the Children's Bureau got was complaints about Baumeister. Some workers say his behavior was unusual. All he would hire was teenage students or... Boys mainly? Boys. That's it. A couple times he said, well, I got to take him home. He'll leave and he doesn't come back till noon the next day. The Children's Bureau ended the contract with Baumeister two weeks ago. About the same time, human bones surfaced again at his estate. The biggest news from Fox Auto Farm on this Wednesday came early. Positively, five uh, bodies out there. Uh, by the bones he found yesterday, uh, I believe they found about 75 bones. And, and through that, they was able to identify the two other bodies definitely were out there, so we all do have five. Authorities still believe the bones have been buried in the 18-acre estate for the last nine to 18 months. Anthropologists say the bones are definitely that of adults. Now, that was likely help law enforcement, but it's not enough. We have nothing at this time, and, and will not uh, until the anthropologists can, can give us some kind of sex and hopefully they cause a death. Digging at the site concluded today. A search party walked through the property is scheduled for Friday. It, it's real frustrating. I mean, you know, we have to wait. Uh, everybody's curious. We have our own thoughts, but we have to wait until we get a, an answer from the anthropologist. That's expected to take 30 to 40 days. On 10 wooded acres at the former home of an Indiana serial killer, so everybody can go get dogs and we'll plan out what we're going to do. Eleven cadaver dogs went on a search Saturday looking for human remains. Kyle, Avery, yeah. down there. It's the first time ever canines have been brought in to Fox Hollow Farm and the mission is personal. These are missing people. Uh, these remains represent people. They represent someone's family member. And if we can recover additional remains, work to identify those remains, and then get some closure for some family members that, that don't know what happened to their loved one. Investigators believe at least 25 gay men were lured in by Herb Baumeister and killed in the 80s and 90s. In 1996, they discovered 10,000 bone fragments here. Morning. But many of Baumeister's victims have never been identified. The home's current owner still finds bones on the property. He invited Indiana Canine Search and Recovery to sniff out more clues. Apparently the killer did not bury anyone. He literally just laid them on the ground and animals drug the bones all over the property. And it's a large area. About 60% of the property is woods. So uh, I wouldn't say it's impossible to search at all, but it's, it's, it's pretty impractical. That's why the dogs are here. The canines are trained to detect the odor of human remains. A change in behavior lets the handlers know they've spotted something. How she's going in circles and she's going back and forth and back and forth. She's trying to pinpoint where it is. They're working the area and they're working it really, really hard. But there's so much here for them to smell. The dogs did find at least one bone and several areas where investigators will examine further. Those are marked with red flags. It is a painstaking but important process then we need to provide those families with, with the closure that they deserve. To heal the families of missing men decades after their deaths. It, it's real frustrating. I mean, you know, we have to wait. Uh, everybody's curious. We have our own thoughts, but we have to wait until we get a, an answer from the anthropologist. That was in 1996 as investigators searched Fox Hollow Farms, the home of suspected serial killer Herbert Baumeister. What they found were more questions. From that search, uh, there were nearly 10,000 bones and bone fragments recovered. Hamilton County Coroner-Elect Jeff Jellison says, initially, that led to 11 DNA profiles being identified, matching eight people, all reported as missing persons, believed to be victims of Baumeister. Investigators believe Baumeister had been preying on gay men, killing them and burying them on his property. But soon after the investigation began, he took his own life. That's left many of Baumeister's alleged victims unidentified for over a quarter of a century. We think that there's probably more people uh, that were recovered from, from that location and maybe as possibly as many as 25 people. With the improvements to DNA testing and a team of investigators ready to dig in, 
Jellison says they're ready to get to work in identifying all of Baumeister's remaining victims. These remains represent people. They're someone's son, someone's father, someone's brother, and these people have been placed on a shelf for 26 years. They were essentially forgotten, and they're not forgotten any longer. Hopeful that forensic advancements will allow investigators to take these once discarded remains buried at Fox Hollow Farms and finally give families answers and allow them to say goodbye to their loved ones. You, you want to provide those people with a final resting place. And really the only way we can do that is to <clears throat> identify them. So for family members, it, it's huge to have closure. You'll see this ravine. 26 years later. This goes back to Cool Creek. The memories are still fresh. This is the area where most of the intact bones were found. It's history Robert Graves lives with. When we first got here, we decided that we were kind of trying to put all this behind us, but you, you can't get away from it. It's, it's always that place. He moved into the Fox Hollow Farm 15 years ago, but in 1996, it was the home of Herb Baumeister, who allegedly killed dozens of men and left their remains on the property. This is where it happened. Remains graves still uncovers to this day. We don't go looking for them, but they do turn up. Um, and I take them to the University of Minneapolis. We will have to conduct a very large scale investigation in which DNA profiling is attempted on all of those samples um, because we have an open population. So we are unsure exactly how many people are represented. Forensic teams from the University of Indianapolis were searching these woods for weeks back in 1996 behind the home of then owner Herb Baumeister. And they're excited there's a renewed interest in trying to find the identity of the remaining victims. We do have um, an estimated 10,000 samples that, that need to be addressed here. They need the victim's family members to come forward. We have more unidentified human remains cases in the state of Indiana than we have ref family reference samples. Wow. So that means in general, not just from 26 years ago. I think it's a, it's a good thing. Um, there's certainly a lot of families that don't have answers. And they're hoping these new efforts produce just that. Stay with 13 News for the latest developments in the Herb Baumeister case and check out more of our coverage online at WTHR.com.